About eight years ago, a good friend of mine by the name of Kevin Jackson shared a concept with me. Matter of fact, he shared it with not just with me, but with all of our covenant brothers. And what the concept is called is the God resume. What the concept is about is building out God's resume or God's performance in the life of the believer, specifically your life, specifically my life. And Kevin shared this concept, like I said, about eight years ago. And I didn't, I didn't have any biblical uh, uh, thesis for the concept. I trust Kevin. He shared the concept, how it was blessing him. So I trusted him and I took the idea and I began to run with it. And ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, and foes, it's been a blessing. So what I wanna do in this short video is share with you the blessing of the God resume. You see, the God resume is a way to document how God is demonstrating his love in your life. There are so many reasons. I'm gonna only give you about three, but there are so many reasons why the believer should do this, why the believer needs to do this. And yes, for those of you who are theologians, or maybe I should say no, for those who, of you who are theologians and you're these Bible, you're a Bible scholar, no, God never says, have to do a God resume, but there is scriptural reference or, or an undergirding for this concept called the God resume. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to jump into this biblical concept called the God resume. Now, what is the God resume. I'm glad you asked that question. You ask, you start off with such great questions. The God resume is a journal composed of clearly written accounts of God demonstrating his love just for you. Let's break this down. A journal. Here's mine. It could be a composition notebook. It could be an engineering journal. It could be a portfolio, whatever you want it to be. Don't get hung up on what color it should be, how it should look, how many pages should be in it. Should it be eight and a half by 11 or eight by 10? All of that is not important. If, if you don't journal now, just go get a composition notebook from Walmart, 50 cents, or maybe some are 80 cents. Real simple, just get started because I promise you, you're going, if you do this and do it right, you're going to fill up the journal. And if you want to go buy a $20 journal after the first one, go ahead, but don't delay your start based on how should it look, how many pages, eight and a half. Yeah, don't, don't, don't uh, let that trip you up. So get your journal, just get started. Or uh, I have a couple of uh, uh, our brothers that Kevin shared this with. They don't like to write it like I do. They prefer to type it out. Whatever the case is, you want a clearly written account of God demonstrating his love just for you. This is your own personal account. There is no right or wrong way to do it. You're going to, if you do this correctly, you're going to have multiple journals throughout your entire life. So if you start with a, a eight and a half by 10 black, great. Go to gray on number two. It's no big deal. So the key is a journal composed of clearly written accounts of God demonstrating his love for you. Now, as we walk through this, this, this definition that I've written for the God resume, immediately you see words that stand out to you. One we just went over, journal. Clearly written accounts. I personally prefer to write versus type. I think writing does something to your conscious and subconscious mind. That's a whole nother video. But the most important part of this definition that stands out is God demonstrating his love just for you. 
Now, what does that remind you of? What scripture? Of course, Romans 5 and 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, yeah, I could go to a, I could go I could go off on a tangent on this scripture because you know how you if, if for those of us who grew up in church, you heard songs like Amazing Grace. And if you didn't grow in grow up in church, no big deal. Go listen to Amazing Grace. When you think about those words and you think about what God has done in your life and for your life, and you didn't deserve it. Well, well, maybe I shouldn't talk. I'll just talk about me. I won't talk about you. You see, I think about my life and how I was living, how I was drinking, things I was doing. And I know for a fact it was not putting a smile on God's face. But God, he loved me anyway. And he didn't just say I love you with his mouth. He expressed his love through the sending of his son. Jesus expressed, Jesus demonstrated his love by willingly laying down his life. Those, those two right there, that, that can be your first two entries in your journal. A journal composed of clearly written accounts of God demonstrating his love just for you. So be clear that even while we were in sin, God loved us so much, he sent his son. Jesus loved us so much, he willingly laid down his life. And even a number three, the Holy Spirit loves us so much that he comforts us. Even when we turn our back to him, even when we don't listen to our teacher, the Holy Spirit still comforts and teach, teaches. So. That's three entries in your journal already. And you ain't even got started. You already got three entries. But when you look at this passage, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, I don't know about you, but I think about all the many ways that while I was in sin, God demonstrated his love. And when I committed my life to Christ, how God is so consistent He's so faithful and he's still demonstrating his love. I think that's very important for the believer to know these clearly, cl clearly written accounts, these situations, these occurrences in our life where God has demonstrated his love. When you look at the first testament, most of us call it the old testament, when you walk from Genesis all the way into the second testament or the New Testament up to Revelation, you see accounts of God demonstrating his love for Jews and Gentiles. In the first Testament, we see so many different examples of what God did for the children of Israel. Those are various accounts in their life on what he did, but they come with various instructions. So here is where we begin to see and undergirding for this concept called the God resume. Now, I went through maybe about 20 or so scriptures and, and I never saw the words God resume, but I saw the concept, I saw the encouraging, I saw the urging, I saw the direction of this concept called the God resume. I'm, I, I'm just giving you about seven here right now today I'm going to give you all 22 that I went through. But of those seven, I want to talk about three. I want to highlight three of them. So go ahead, take a screenshot, put it on pause, write these down. But I encourage you, walk through the all seven of these passages yourself. And what we're going to talk about today is just the first three. So the 150th number of psalm, Psalms, verse number two. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. So the question becomes, hmm, praise him for his mighty works. Well, what are God's mighty works? Question number one. And then question number two, what are God's mighty works in my life? You see, the Bible 
is like as a clearly written account of God's mighty works in the first testament and the second testament. But when we ask that second question, we can now begin to enumerate on paper what are God's mighty works in my life? What is God's unequaled greatness in my life? Now, I don't know about you, but there have been situations in my life, and I know I probably should not be here. Places I put myself in, and I know I shouldn't be here. Literally, I should not be alive but God's grace and mercy. When we are able to document God's mighty works, God's unequaled greatness in our life, it empowers our ability to witness to people, to share the gospel of the kingdom with those who may not know or those who do know, but they need to be encouraged. So I encourage you to ask yourself, what are God's mighty works? What is, what are God's, what, what is God's unequal greatness in my life? Make it personal. Example number two, the 145th number of Psalms, verse four. One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. One generation will declare, will tell, will boast, about God's works to the next generation. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, and even foes, if there be any, when we think about God's unequaled greatness and declaring that to the next generation, gee, there, there, are, there are children, family members, friends, nieces, nephews, who need to hear about God's unequaled greatness. See, a lot of times our, our nieces, our nephews, our children look up to us, think we've been walking on water since Jesus was on the planet. We ain't never did no wrong. We never struggled with sin. We never struggled with sex outside of marriage. We never struggled with, with getting, getting our drink on. And they think we've never had some of the same challenges that they may be facing right now. And so when we are able to sincerely talk about God's unequaled greatness in our life, it encourages that, that person. I've seen this happen so many times. You all, Jesus taught using stories. So it is crucial that we are clear about the story of our life, even though it's the story of our life, we, we're not the, the, the main character. We're not the one, the one who's, who's winning the Oscar. But through our life, we can point to Jesus. We can point to God demonstrating his love in our life and telling the next generation, proclaiming God's mighty acts in our life to the next generation. Example number two, the 105th number of Psalms, verses one through five. So I want to put an emphasis on verses one, two, and five. I'm not going to go through all five, just those three, one, two, and five. Verse one, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. This stop right there. When I, I once heard a, a minister say one time that when you start to think, you go into thanks. So when we begin to document, think about and document God's, you know, unequaled greatness in our life, his mighty works, his mighty acts in our life, we immediately, we immediately go into thanks. So I encourage you all, take this technique, begin to document God's unequaled greatness in your life and watch what it does to you. Let the whole world know what he has done. So here we have in the previous scriptural example and in this example about us giving God thanks and telling, proclaiming, boasting, sharing with the world about God and what he has done. 
Sing to him, verse two, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Can you imagine one day of the week getting clarity on God's unequaled greatness in your life, all through your life, since you were uh, uh, in your mother's womb up until present day, getting clarity. And then God in his infinite wisdom gives you and sends you somebody, let somebody cross your path who needs to hear that story. But if you didn't invest the time to get the clarity and be ready, then how can you tell the story? Verse number five, remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. Remember the wonders. Oftentimes, I know I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I forget stuff. And if my wife sends me to the grocery store, men, what do I need to do? Write it down. If my wife is standing in the kitchen talking to me, telling me, get this, get this, get that, I just look at her and I tell her, hey, baby, write it down or text it. I'm not going to remember. Now, you may have a super sharp memory, unlike mine. I have a good memory, but it's not super sharp like my Uncle Clifford. But what does the word tell us? Remember. So if you got a super sharp memory and you can remember, or if you got to write it down like me, whatever you do, the word tells us, remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. You see, God is, is still speaking. God has given us instruction. And when we are able to document God demonstrating his love just for us in the, in the, the, the multitude of ways that he does it, it enables us to boast about it, to tell others about it. It enables us to put them on paper and remember from one year to another, from one generation to another. So I encourage you, reflect on these three passages and watch how it impacts every area of your walk with Christ. Now, as we move to a close, I wanna highlight a few points. I mentioned at the very beginning that God demonstrating his love is one of the entries that you could have in your God resume journal. God demonstrating his love through the sending of his son, what Jesus did in willingly laying down his life is another in, uh, entry. God's provision in your life. How has God provided in your life? What has God done to not only forgive you, but to help you forgive others uh, and how you were wrong. I know one of my entries in my journal was how I prayed about forgiving somebody for 10 years. Prayed about it for 10 years. I knew it was something I needed to do, but honestly, I didn't want to do it. It's going to be, I, I'm not going to fake the funk, which is going to be real. So I would talk to God about it. And when God grew me to a point spiritually where I could go to, it was two different people. One person was 10 years, another one was longer than that. To go to these people and I, I actually could have that conversation. You all, that was a victory for me. I felt like I had went from, from elementary in Christ. I'm now in middle school. I graduated. But you all, forgiveness, what about protection? I remember when me and Andrea were in, uh, we were in, in Greece and I, get, I, I told my wife, we're gonna go ride this, we're gonna go here, we're gonna get back to the hotel room. And I gave in, my wife wanted to look, do a little more shopping, I let it get dark on us. Well, we couldn't find our way back and we were on a four wheeler, not a car. <laughs> and we ended up, on the side of a cliff with a sign saying danger. You all, that trip could have gone a whole different way. But she and I, 
were praying, guess what's in my God resume? Not just that trip, not just her winning that trip, but God's protection on that trip. God's wisdom, God giving his spiritual gifts, uh, God blessing me with the fruit of the spirit, blessing you with the fruit of the spirit. How has God demonstrated his love just through these few ways? Now we have biblical examples of God demonstrating his love. We have corporate examples that are occurring in the body of Christ. I remember when our church came together and we began to pray for Robbie Tolan and uh, Mrs. Tolan and Mr. Tolan and what they were dealing with, with systemic evil in the police force and in our judicial system. But God showed up. So understand God is showing up. He's expressing, he's demonstrating, and we want to put these experiences on paper and the biggest one that we've been talking about is putting these personal experiences putting them on paper so that we can now minister to other people in addition to that in the the process of ministering to other people and even before that process the process of writing these things these entries in our journals it emboldens our faith. It empowers our hope. It strengthens our witness. And then if you add a simple prayer, God, show me who you want me to minister to. Now you've prepared through scripture, through your own labor in the word with the word becoming real in your life. And when God sends you to people, you are able for it, for it to just flow out of you and bless their life. I promise you, you do this process, it will embolden your faith, it will empower your hope, it'll strengthen your witness, it'll help you remember what God did five years ago. So when you face it five years from now, you know what? We got this. You must not know who my God is. It will empower you so I encourage you all to do this. The final point that I didn't put on the slide is when we do this and we've lived that full life that God promises us and we, we can pass this journal or a series of journals on to the next generation. Can you imagine the impact that that this can have can you imagine me and andrea my wife for those who may watch this who may not know who my wife is and we pass pass our journals onto our children and my children have embraced this idea they are doing god resumes at 10 and 13 have been for the past year and then they pass ours and theirs on to their children and then they can flip through the journals and and, and be in 2080 talking about what god did in 2020 in the life of my grandparents the life of my parents you all this is this is a concept that i am so grateful the holy spirit blessed my friend kevin jackson and Kevin Jackson did not do, unfortunately, what so many believers do. He didn't keep his mouth closed. He shared the blessing. He shared the power of this concept. So I encourage you, journal God's clearly written accounts of him demonstrating his love just for you. And do me a favor and let me know how it blesses your life. So with that being said, I'm going I'm to answer this phone later. I thank you all. I, I didn't cut it off earlier. I thank you. I pray that this is a blessing and definitely enjoy this concept and let me know how it blesses you.